Can you get this one transistor Morse code transmitter to talk? That's what some people who saw my video on it want to know. Keep watching and I'll tell you the answer. You might remember this circuit diagram. To make this transmitter transmit voice, you need to vary the current going into the oscillator here. You can do this by varying the power supply voltage applied to your transmitter. In the old days, there are things called carbon microphones, and you could just connect a carbon microphone in the supply lead and the varying resistance of that microphone as you spoke impressed some differences on the signal, including it being able to transmit voice, more precisely AM voice. You could either connect the carbon microphone to the positive supply rail in series with the battery, or you could connect it in the emitter lead. That works because the transmitter was not transmitting when the key was lifted, but if you apply your variable signal in here, you'll get it to conduct and modulate audio so the output will be a voice transmission on AM. There are some trade-offs. For instance, AM is not as effective as single sideband and in turn not as effective as Morse code. And especially as this is such a low power transmitter, your transmitting range with AM will be far, far less than with Morse code. It will be like 1% efficient or something like that. It's tiny. Still, you will be able to prove just within your own home that you can transmit voice and maybe even get a kilometer, two kilometers, three kilometers, maybe even more if the receiving station is in a quiet location. Now, of course, we don't have carbon microphones as easily obtainable as used to be the case, so we have to do a little bit more. And that little bit more is to have a audio amplifier and a microphone, which can be an electric microphone insert. It's about the size of a P. As for the audio amplifier, this one is a very simple design using an LM386. You could even use something salvaged from some computer speakers or even an old radio. I'll draw you a quick diagram. Okay, here is the diagram of the audio amplifier. It's a standard circuit, nothing is special about it. You can even buy pre-made LM386 audio amplifier modules. Right here is the volume control, which you set to near maximum. The audio input is applied through pin 3, pins 2 and 4 are earthed, pin 7 just has a 10 microfarad capacitor to earth, that just keeps it a bit more stable. Across pins 1 and 8 is a 10 microfarad capacitor, could be a tantalum or an electrolytic, that increases the gain and you do need a little bit more gain with this amplifier circuit so that's why you need it. Um, 10 ohm resistor, this is the power supply here at the top, 100 ohm capacitor from pin 6 which is the power connection down to earth, earth is the negative across the bottom. To keep things stable a resistor and capacitor in series from pin 5 to earth, 10 ohm and 100 nanofarad. And here is the output and about 220 microfarad uh, coming off pin 5. Now, here on the left is the microphone. We're using an electric microphone and it needs a bias voltage to work. So we've got that applied via a 10K resistor here. A 10 nanofarad capacitor across the microphone that just um, rolls off some highs and keeps the thing stable. And the electric microphone here is a commonly available component. 
Something I should mention with electric microphones is that they are polarized components. If they're not connected the right way in the circuit, they will not work. I'm lucky with this microphone because there's a black or negative lead and a red or positive lead. So the black normally goes to earth and the red will be your audio output and where you apply DC voltage for the microphone. If your electric microphone doesn't have leads, like you might have salvaged it from a printed circuit board, you can normally detect which is positive and which is negative by a couple of methods. First of all, have a close look at the back of the microphone. Now, it's obscured a bit here because there's some glue, but if you look carefully, just near my thumb, you can see that the negative connection has a trace because the back of the microphone is like printed circuit board material and that trace goes to the metal case of the microphone. Whereas if you were to look at the positive lead, if I was to remove the glue, which I won't, you'll see that it's not connected to the outer. Another way you can check the polarity of a electric microphone if there aren't cutted leads coming off it is you have a multimeter set to the ohms range or continuity indicator and you have one lead on the metal case and then you try either of the two or sometimes even three connections on the electric microphone and the one that is shorted to the case will be the negative or earth lead. And so that's the one that goes to earth. As I said before, very important you get that connection right, otherwise the electric microphone will not work. That's unlike most other microphones which can be connected anyway and it doesn't matter. As we're talking about an AM voice transmitter, you call this stage the modulator, even though it's an audio amplifier. Uh, same components, it's just the modulator. So we've got a AC signal here that's amplified from the microphone, and we have to apply that to a point on the transmitter circuit that causes the uh, transmitted signal to vary in its amplitude, and you get a voice signal coming out of it. So how do we connect the modulator to the transmitter so that it works? We're going to apply the audio to the emitter of this transistor, the BD139. Now we want some DC current to flow otherwise the oscillator will not be turned on. So we put a resistor across from here. D2 on the chopping board down to the ground. So any of the wires in the one row, like F1, that will mean that the transmitter won't have as much power on AM as it will on Morse, but you will be able to modulate it. If we just press the key of the transmitter, the problem with that is that as you've also got the audio being applied at this spot, you're shorting out the audio, so you won't hear anything. So that's why you need a resistor across here. The value is not that critical. I found that the signal is weaker, but the modulation is stronger when the value is higher, like 82 ohm. I tried a lower value of 12 ohm, and the signal was stronger, but the modulation was weaker with that. So somewhere in that range. In the previous video, I mentioned using a 47 ohm resistor as a dummy load. You could use that instead, going from the emitter down to ground. So I'll just draw you in a bit of the transmitter circuit. There's that resistor I mentioned before which let's call it 27 ohm. It does, as I mentioned before, it can be, or it worked for me with 12 ohm, 
worked with 82 ohm, it can work with 47 ohm. And of course, at this point, this is where we have the emitter of the transmitter. And of course, here we've got the 10 nanofarad capacitor. And right across from here, this is where you had the Morse key, but not actually going to be using the key for transmitting voice. And up here is the rest of the transmitter circuit. There's the crystal, there's a capacitor, coupling capacitor, inductor up here, and the pi network, etc. up here. The wires here are a bit long, and it's probably a good idea to shorten the wires, make them a bit neater if you are doing this as a permanent arrangement. The other risk you have with long wires is especially with higher power transmitters is that the radio frequency signals can get into them and cause all sorts of audio problems and feedback. As the output from this transmitter is very low that's unlikely to be a problem in this case. We're now going to get on with modifying it. We have our 27 ohm resistor, the emitter, What you might have heard there is the sound from the receiver I've got, and that's just a dead carrier. I've got the receiver on AM. And when you tune across, if the signal is a lot stronger, it might go completely quiet and then it becomes noisier when you tune off the frequency. I've got the resistor from the emitter to the ground. So current's flowing, transistor's turned on, oscillator is working. The signal in the receiver is a little bit hissy, so I'll just like a screwdriver into the antenna connection on the receiver and now it's gone quiet and you can hear noise coming out of the receiver one two three four five now talking into the microphone and we have succeeded in making this a voice transmitter one two three four five one two three four five this is with the attenuator in, so now the signal is much weaker than before. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Now I've connected the antenna again. Now, the signal now sounds quite strong. That's because the carrier was very strong. The modulation is still weak, but because it's only a short distance, it's disguising the weakness in its modulation. But as you just heard before, you could hear the carrier, but not much of a voice when the carrier was weak. So this amplifier and this transmitter combination is not particularly good because the audio isn't very strong on it, but it was enough just to prove that you can transmit voice with this one transistor transmitter. The next thing I'll do is to measure its RF power output. As I mentioned before, I put a resistor in the emitter lead so whereas with the Morse transmitter, I got half a watt output, the output from this will be much less. Actually not that much less, around 400 milliwatts. The crystal I used for my tests was 3.58 megahertz. Here's another frequency, 3.686.
it's less commonly available, but you might still be able to find it on eBay. This is a better frequency in the 80 meter band for voice transmission tests. So I'll put this one in this transmitter. I found that the new crystal did not oscillate in this circuit. But when I connected a capacitor from collector to ground, it did. 470 picofarad. So if there's an issue with your oscillator not starting, then try this trick. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is VK3K8Z online Kiwi SDR. You can see a thin trace at 3.686.4, but no audio can be heard. Just to confirm that the trace is me, I'll just shut off the transmitter. And you can see the end of the trace there. So it was definitely my signal. Uh, VK3KHZ is about maybe 50 kilometers from here. And it's about 5.15 in the afternoon. I've connected the transmitter and the trace is back. This is VK3OQ, quite a bit further away from VK3KHZ and you can hear the carrier just to prove it's me i'll just turn it off and back on again That was me turning it on and off again. A weak signal, but nowhere near enough for AM. As I mentioned before, AM is much inferior to SSB, and SSB much inferior to CW. And the weakness of the modulation is probably not helping. I think the transmitter could be modulated a bit more strongly. This has been an enjoyable project, mainly to prove how simple it is to build a voice transmitter that can transmit over several kilometers. I wouldn't however recommend it as something to get contacts. There's many limitations. For instance, it's weak modulation, it's low power, it being crystal controlled, and it being AM if a transmitter or transceiver for getting contacts is more your thing, then I'd suggest something that's frequency agile, has a bit more output power, and transmits double or single sideband. An example is the Beach 40. More details of that on my website at vk3ye.com. 
This YouTube channel also has descriptions and demonstrations of it.